Praise the Lord. Come on, let us stand the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Let's go to Isaiah 59. Isaiah 59, we'll read verse uh, 14 to 16. I think your Bible just opens up automatically now. Isaiah 59. <laughs> and I encourage you, I said read it from the beginning, so at least when, you, when we get to verse 14, at least you know the, the preceding verses again. It says, as a result of whatever the Lord has said from Genesis, from uh, chapter number one, where it says, the arm of the Lord is not too short that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy that it cannot hear, but your sins have built a wall between you and your God. And when we cry out from this other side of the world, then God cannot hear us because our behavior has created a wall. Over 14 it says, therefore justice is turned back. So justice is driven back and righteousness stands at a distance. And I said to you, when we look at justice is driven back, righteousness stands at a distance. It means righteousness is willing to walk into the situation as soon as there's justice. Righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Therefore, honesty cannot enter. Truth is nowhere to be found. And whoever becomes, whoever shuns evil becomes prey. And I said that this is the present earthly condition of every intercessor. Shun evil, you become a victim. It says the Lord looked and he was displeased that there was no justice. He saw that there was no one. He was appalled or disgusted that there was no one to intervene or to intercede. And that's the topic Aruna. So his own arm worked salvation for him. Father, we just thank you. It says, and his own righteousness sustained him. Amen. Thank you, Lord, in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Uh, just be kind to your neighbor. Tell them it's only two months before you know what get it. <laughs> mm? Before December. I think by now you understand the difference between December and December. December is a month after November. But December, with a Z, is when you have money in December. Yes. So December is when you have money during December. We are told again. Amen. Good morning. Are you cool? Amen. God bless you. I promise you now, this is the last but one on the... On the in this series, you are the minister of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. Next week, we are completing. See that? And uh, no, no, I don't expect any more complaints after that. If you're going to complain, you are going to have to prepare lesson number 16 and come and preach it here. Yeah. Deal or no deal? No deal. Okay, no problem. <laughs> so, yes, let's talk... Uh, about the minister of the Holy Spirit, this is our 15th installment with emphasis in the life of the believer. The minister of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Today I want us to look at what I've subentitled the pains, sorrows, and rewards of the intercessor. The pains, sorrows, and the rewards of the intercessor. 
I said to you, if intercession was all about praying, we should have gotten the job done many years ago. Remember that? Or if it was only about praying, we pray so much. Things should be done already. But the fact that the more we continue to pray, we still have to find that there are gaps that need to be closed. It simply means somebody has to stop praying only and move into the gap. And I've already explained myself a lot really around this lens, uh, especially with regards to you stepping in to see if a brother or a sister could get some kind of intervention from the Lord through you. The story is the, the good Samaritan. Do you understand that? He was inconvenienced, but the good Samaritan was a, a type of an intercessor. He could have just prayed for the man, Lord, heal this man, we thank you that he never died, and jumped over and walked away. The brother could have died, possibly. But because he understood the mission of an intercessor, it is that what would Jesus do under the circumstances? Jesus would have actually done what the good Samaritan did. He would have actually made it a point that the man gets the kind of help he or she needs. If she was a, a female, of course, that kind. You know what? But then we also said um, intercession is a ministry that is not as easy as it seems like on the outside. Because the inside of intercession is a very sorrowful kind of ministry. It's a lonely ministry. It's, a, it's something that requires people who will actually be completely given to God. You get my point? A person who's totally surrendered. A person who will say, come what may, I'm going to stand in the gap. If it alienates me from my fellow brethren, if it makes me suffer at the hands of the battle I'm fighting for the others, there'll always be rewards on the other side. Intercessors will actually have to believe that whatever they have to forfeit in this world, God will see to it in the next life. Remember, we cannot be afraid of the next life. We lived in this life and we were never existing before. So the next life would just be like sleep in this life, wake up on the other side. And I believe that the God who is in control now will still be in control then. We'll see next week, I'll, I'll show you next, next week around the other things, where I, I would be talking about intercession goes beyond the grave. So, we said to you last week, why, according to Isaiah 59, why would God, being God and omnipotent, care if there is no man or not in order for him to solve issues? And we Gave you Psalms 11516, where it says, The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the sons of men. That um, it's a matter of jurisdictions, that God has given men the jurisdiction near the planet earth. So whatever men decides to do on earth, so be it. Heaven says, Amen. Matthew chapter number 18. You are Peter, upon this rock I will build my church, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loosen shall be loosened. Whatever you, you agree on earth, whatever you let go shall be let go because God respects the authority that he has given unto men. And that is why the world or the earth, the, the world is a system, the earth is the, is the planet. When the earth and the world is both are in such chaos because men doesn't want anything to do with God. And I said to you, God is not interested in borrowing you money or anything else. He wants to colonize you. Remember that? Now make me president. I fly right away to England. Please, recolonize us. I come back. We bend the rent. We, we have the pound. That's all. Finish and clear. If you don't want, go to Malawi. So God is not interested in borrowing us, in sending us help, in putting healing or food in an aeroplane, flying it from heaven, dropping it at, uh, on earth. He wants to colonize us. The Lord's prayer, let your kingdom come. There will be no kingdom without a king. When the kingdom comes, there's going to be king and there's going to be some kind of a rulership. And where your kingdom is, let your will be done. Which means, God, let your kingdom come and let your constitution run our country, our world. 
Then give us this day our daily bread. Do you get the point? What are we? The, 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 the needs, the needs of the people of God, people's needs can only be taken, taken care of by God, not only on a lending basis, but on a colonization basis, a provider, a provide, a provide, a providing God, providing the needs of those he has colonized. Therefore, as much as we live in the world today, different governments, everyone doing their own thing, like the children of Israel in Egypt, our attitude and our intercessory spirit should be able to create a country within a country, Hoshen, where everybody is in trouble, but we're enjoying the grace of God. And that is why every intercessor should actually continue to pray, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. And they must be pushing kingdom issues and completely standing with God. Stand with God's will against people of this world. Are you okay with that? So that's what we need to do. We need to realize that God is not God in heaven only. He is God on earth. But now, I doubt if there are problems in heaven. We've never read anywhere except when the devil wanted to cause a coup and he was thrown out immediately. But ever since then, the Bible doesn't state any, any other thing except that heaven is running softly so and, and smoothly so. But then, for God to come and intervene in the affairs of this world, he needs a man, a stand in between. He was appalled that there was no man that he could use to intervene between him and the sinful man. So I'm saying the church needs to wake up and realize that we are the church. And as being the church, we are the sons of God. And as being the sons of God, we are heirs of this salvation. We are kings and queens. Church is an embassy of God on earth. You are ambassadors for God. That's what Paul said earlier. Therefore, on God's behalf, we pray you, we plead with you, please be reconciled with God. Are you okay with that? That's the minister of intercession. So an intercessor can never agree with the principles of a corrupt government yet represent a godly government. You cannot, you cannot. An intercessor cannot afford to be relevant. Because intercessor stands as priests between God and man. They plead for the sins. They plead for reconciliation. They make peace between God and man. An intercessor stands as a prophet. He declares, he proclaims the word of God. He tells the king, the Lord says, you are not doing well. Or he tells the king, the, the, the king God is not happy with what you are doing. An intercessor stands as a king. He commands, he fights wars on the behalf of the government he belongs to. So we are in the world, in governments that are done, that don't respect God at all. And then I don't care whether you get angry or not. It's not about your party. It's about the government. An evil government. The governments of this world are evil. They have nothing to do with the things of the Lord. They hate God. They hate Jesus. They hate everything that stands for God. The food they give you is not what their dogs would eat. I said to you, no matter how much famine there is in a nation, the king's dog will always be eating better delicacies than what the kings give to the men in the street. Therefore, we stand with the kingdom of God. We see the evil in this world. And we pray, Lord, let your kingdom come and let your will be done. The law shall go forth from Zion. Finally, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the top amongst mountains. People will flock to it. For they shall say to each other, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Let us go up to the house of the God of Jacob. And there he shall teach us his ways and we will walk in him. He'll teach us his laws and we will walk in his ways. Simple. God's will should prevail. Therefore, an intercessor who becomes an intercessor and, and, and a compromiser at the same time. Just imagine. You're committing treason. Actually, high treason. Selling the government of God by subscribing to the ideologies of the evil men you are praying to pray for. 
We need to stick out like a sore thumb. Are you okay? Amen. Let's go to Isaiah 53. The pains, sorrows, and rewards of the intercessor. Now, there is no better example to look at than Jesus. He's the best, best example. Remember, he said to the disciples, who do people say that I, the son of man, is? Some say you are Elijah. Some say uh, 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 whoever who's Elijah. But then who do you say that I am? Peter says then you are the Christ, the son of the living God. But he said, who do people say that I, the son of man is? The Bible says though he was God, he took the form of a man. He was born in a manger. Walked the streets of Jerusalem. Became an adult in that city. Went to the sons of men. Establish a kingdom of God now on earth. Said to them, I'm going to the Father. I'm going to ask him to send you another comfort who's the Holy Spirit. Who will come and be with you. But ensure that you become kingdom minded. I'm paraphrasing it. Hold on to the principles of the kingdom. Preach the gospel. Go after the others in this perishing world. Bring them into the kingdom. So that finally we have the kingdom of God with subjects to the kingdom on earth. Then we will be considered. God will look down and see us down here and consider us as a kingdom. Therefore, once we become a kingdom, every area we occupy becomes embassy. Then we sit down here and I said to you, when I don't care how poor we become as a country, any ambassador from any other country who comes here is never affected by the currency and the problems and the petrol prices of your country. They are immune to that. Believe me, they are immune. They won't worry. Their, their governments will actually keep uh, making sure they stay ahead of the inflation. You could be in your own space where God has put you and suffer like you are an alien unless you become an ambassador for God. So when you see the word intercessor, think in these terms. Think ambassador. Should we try it today? A lot of things. Will you qualify as an ambassador? Are you suffering like the rest? Are you as confused as the rest? Are you troubled? Are you uncertain about the future like everyone else? Come on. Join the kingdom of God. Don't only be a subject to the kingdom. Be a platoon leader in the kingdom. Become an intercessor. Then you begin to realize how God takes care of his own. That in no calamity, he said in the book of Psalms 91, he says a thousand will fall at your side. 10,000 on your right hand side, but it will never come near you. It says you will only stand and behold with your eyes the reward of the wicked. And the reason was what? He who dwells in the secret place, verse 1, of the Most High, shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Shadow of the Almighty, God says, when I took my children out of Egypt, I carried them on wings like an eagle. The best picture to describe God is a mother hen when, when there's rain and he sits there, she sits there and the chicks would be under the wings. You see little hairs beholding the storm but never being hit. Yet mom is being hit by every storm. That's immunity. They are in the middle of it. They are beholding it happen but it never touches them. Why? Because he, he, he covers them with his wings. They find refuge. They find shelter under the wings of the Lord. So intercessors should be people who realize that intercession finally makes a breakthrough. So don't be afraid to stick out as a praying, as a praying person. Don't be afraid to stick out as a man or a woman who stands for God in this generation.
So from the beginning of his earthly life to the end of it, Jesus never had any personal breakthrough. Read the Bible. Show me one, show me one benefit Jesus had. One. Read the Bible and bring it here. Show me what more Jesus benefited personally. Nothing. The most effective person ever. All powerful, almighty. God listening to him. Everything else. He never benefited once from everything he said. Actually, everything he said. I said last week, two things happened. As much as Jesus was crucified by God's perfect will, he was brutally killed by the hatred of men. Two things were done on the cross. As a lamb, he was crucified. As man, he was hated and he was killed. They killed him. To get the point, why did they kill him? Because of this, he stuck out for God. Everything he said was not what they wanted to hear. He opposed everything. But as long as he opposed everything, he opposed everything which was not what God wanted to, be, to, 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 to have people do. He stood for God. He stood for the love of, love of God. He promoted the laws of God. So much as he came to become a sacrifice for our sins, on the cross they were not putting him born. Nah. By God's will on the cross he was there for becoming a sacrifice. But by the standards of this world they nailed him there to kill him. And that's why they nailed him with two criminals. He was the chief criminal according to them. So it was a day for criminals to be killed. So as much as God will allow you to be an intercessor, you're going to suffer at the hands of people. And that's why when you stick out in a family, the minute somebody, the minute an uncle stops drinking and making babies every month and he goes to church, the family will cry and call for help. Was he better when he was drunk? According to the devil, yes. You're better in your bad state. A girl could prostitute herself until the day she goes to church. The family will never say anything until she says, I'm going to church. But, oh, you need help. While I was walking the streets of Hillbrook, Kipila go quad street, you never said anything. Now that I'm working with Jesus, I need help. That's intercession. You change. Immediately change. That's your first lesson. That is the first step you go into the world of interceding. It's, about, it's called taking sides with God. Okay, now, Isaiah 53, it describes the life of the most powerful individual ever to walk the planet. The most powerful man. A man who was sleeping right at the stern of the boat, and there were winds buffeting the boat, and the disciples came and said, don't you care if we perish? The Bible says he woke up, went there, stood at the dock and said, peace, be still. And the, the storm came, he went back to sleep. And they said, what kind of man is this? Even the winds, listen to him. Listen to how he was described before his own people, Isaiah 53. We'll read verse 1 to 7. Who has believed our response or who, had, or, or who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. There was up. So anything that grows out of dry ground, this was never expected. It was supposed to die. Against all odds he came. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. When he stood there, nobody would care about him. Up to the point that when his only betrayer in the, in the team sold him, he said that how ordinary the man was, you will not be able to recognize him. I wish Jesus was a pastor. He would be recognizable. Are you aware? He said, I'll go show him you, the man. Go the way. He looked like the rest, the others. So there was no beauty or majesty that would attract anyone to him. So God did not send Jesus to be attractive to anybody but to God. Let your beauty the beauty of your heart, your spirit, your soul, your impact, let it be acceptable to God. I'm not saying be rude, but if I'm going to want to please men, they will still knock you on the cross. 
Because it's about the principles you follow. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Jesus was the kind of person, according to this description, the most powerful man. The man who said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. The man the heavens opened after his baptismal and the voice came saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He says his appearance, there was nothing impressive about him that people should desire him. Jesus was the kind of man who would walk into, into a, 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 an occasion and people would say, is your name on the, on the list? As a matter of fact, he did go to a party. Jesus, yeah, Jesus attended the bash, Kokana, John chapter number two. But they never knew about him. He was just another person until his mother made him trend. Until the mother said, no, no, they must know who's this guy. You know that? They ran out of wine. And next time you drink and wine will run out of wine, just pray. His mother just called him and made him trying to say, they have run out of wine. I can tell you now, the Bible doesn't say it, but I've said to you, the Bible is a thinking man's book. The Bible becomes exciting with imagination. I think the next party, they called him. <laughs> you must call that dude. All you need is water. I'm telling you, bro, you need water. Oh, what water? What? I tell you, we drank. We were so drunk. I even got home on Tuesday from that wine. <laughs> just, just get water. Put wine. Put water there. Do you have his number? Do, no, no, no. I forgot the number, but I'll send it by WhatsApp. Every party they wanted him afterwards. But he makes the best wine for less. That's John 145, verse 365. So he appeared, there was nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men. Now, how does God send you to a generation that's going to despise you and reject him? Rule, now we are expecting people to esteem us highly. We expect our families to, 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 to applaud us for going to church. We, are, we expect our families to say, when you're praying, but no, don't, don't, don't bother her. Let, let her pray. You are our tenders. When they will come and knock on your door inside, but can you pray softly, please? We're trying to listen to Uzalo. That's what happens. And you go like, do they know that I'm trying to pray for them? Don't nobody care, dude. They were rejected by men. If Jesus was a person living in our generation now, he would have quit. When I told Mamudi Maru, no, I was, I was okay with you. Let's leave those guys alone. First, they don't even esteem me. I'm the most ordinary looking guy among them. One day, one of them said, Lord, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I want to go with you, something like that. And he said, you know what? Bears have nests. Foxes have holes. Armor and I don't even have a place to sleep. Could he Jesus slept wherever he knocked off? He walked, he walked uh, let me give you an If he was used to he would walk from Deep Kloof for a mission in, in Zola. Ha chaisa, ulale Zola. He wakes up in Zola the next morning. Could he Jesus went to Edgar's looking for an account, but about proof of residence, none. He would never buy a pair of shoes for credit. Because he had nothing to his name. If who said intercessors are going to be better than the rest? As a matter of fact, if you're going to intercede, you might have to find yourself putting on your master's shoes and having to walk in them, not for a mile, for the rest of your life. I promise you. Because the very same people he came to rescue are the very same people who rejected him. Are you aware? 
When somebody, when you're, when you're actually even trying, out of frustration, trying to say to somebody in the family, I'm praying for you, Barry. Did I ask you to pray for me? Huh? Did I even ask you to pray for me? Then you wish you could call fire from heaven. Oh, fire. Holy Ghost fire. Like Elijah. You wish you could just call fire and they get devoured on the spot. But you don't. Your master walked through the same. Let's go back to the scripture. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Huh? Like one whom, from whom men would hide their faces. To, to them, he was just like, you know, let me give you the, the example here, yeah, the mother and the brothers, like I've always given it to you. He was disgusting to his mother and his brothers and, son, and sisters. Because the, the father, Joseph, was a carpenter. Joseph died, died very young in life. The firstborn was supposed to run the business. He did not even want to do the business inside the father. That's why the mother said, we're going to get him. We are tired. He's making bread for everybody who are hungry here. Yeah, the dude is, he's, I mean, he's making fish and bread all over the place, multiplying little wine or another. Huh? Taking, I mean, like literally cash out of the fish's mouth. Just imagine. Ooh. And the mother and the brother have nothing to eat. The principle was Jesus was the author of life. Mary, Mary just tried to be ignorant. But I'll tell you why. Parents normally get pressurized by their siblings. Your siblings. Yeah. Mary knew that Gabriel said to Mary, Mary, you are highly favored among women. Then he told Mary, you are going to, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. You are going to conceive and give birth to, his, to a son. You shall call his name Jesus because he is going to save his people from their sins. So while he came and he was saving people from their sins, Mary felt no. He's my son. I must tell him how to save them and when to save them. First, he must come and just finish this one. Joseph, how is it? I'm going to go to the house. Huh? See? Mary had reasons. For now, you can, you, I don't care. He can save people with spare time. He's the firstborn. Let him come and run the business and say, we need some bread. Let him finish that wall divider, wall, room divider that Joseph took the deposit for. Any carpenter owes anybody, I promise you. Who are many of you are carpenters in this place? No hand will go up, I promise you now. We already ate the money for the base mattress, and you, the people are waiting. That was the case here, Joseph Fulimir. Jesus and the MTN. Well, your father just left things here. But then he was rejected by the same people he came to. Now you stand in your family as an intercessor and you expect people to applaud you. They'll make sure to keep quiet until you say, I'm going to pray. Then they say, oh, you must mow the lawn first. You must wash the dog. You must cook for the cat. You must do this and that. Then you can go for prayer. Nobody will say, you can go to pray for the world. Now I'll cook in your place. No. That's rejection and sorrows and, and everything else that will follow anyone who wants to please God. Now, if you are not like Jesus, then you have an attitude. You wish they drop dead. The Bible says he came to save and to save the lost. Paul says, I was the greatest among them. Are you okay with that? Verse number five. Four, five, three. Huh? Four. Take us to verse four. Surely he took up our what? Infirmities and he carried our sorrows. Yet we consider him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was 
pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we were healed. Now this is in brief the description of the greatest man who ever walked the planet. It doesn't, it, it's, it's like you, it's not talking about Jesus. How does a man like this change the world? He never came to Soweto, but he's got disciples right in Soweto. And he keeps trending and trending. His book has been in print from day one. The Bible is the only book that has been that is printed CD so worldwide 24 hours. It's been from the day it was released, it's been in print. It's been in print, it's been in print. Imagine if Jesus was still around and he got royalties from the book. Elon Musk would be Jesus' chauffeur. He never benefited anything. And this is where we, we differ with a lot of people. Where I say, preaching the gospel for money is sinful. Telling about somebody, his death, his resurrection, who never got any profit from his death. And the first thing you do when you're invited, you say like, the preachers have got the mafia language now. When they invite you, they say, Usibenza Ganjan, how do you work? How much do you charge to come and tell us about the Jesus you serve? When Jesus died and he never got a cent from his death, he never benefited anything. And that is why we have gone out and preached the gospel and never took a cent for it and never, never even, not even in Malia Petrol. Because we are going to tell about the man who never had any benefit from his death. He suffered and suffered rejection and everything. Finally, the sins of those he came to, to redeem were put on him. And the same people he came to redeem were the very ones who hoisted him on the cross. Were the very ones who screamed when Pilate said, can I give uh, you Barnabas instead or release Jesus? But no! Ooh, now we are criminals by nature. Give us another criminal. He's our brother. Kill this man who's acting righteous before us. And funny, he gets knocked on the cross and he says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Imagine the attitude of an intercessor. Somebody who knows that judgment belongs to the Lord. Vengeance, if there's any, will come from the Lord. When I just walk in the footsteps of your master. There's pain, there's sorrow, but there's joys, there's breakthroughs and everything else which come with the ministry of intercession. An intercessor could stand there all their lives and see God use their prayers to, be, to bring people into this world. And God used their shoulders to elevate people to greater heights. And the intercessor still remains at the end of the queue. And never get in there at all. Steps in there. We use steps and scaffolds to build buildings as, as high as we want to go. But I've never seen us invite the scaffold into the lounge when we, uh, we, we, we open the building. It remains. We actually hide it. After we have used scaffoldings and steps and everything, we clean them out of sight. If the building must be opened, we say, who left the scaffolding here? And if a laborer says, but boss, we use the scaffolding to put up this building. Nobody wants it when things are okay. And that's why you just have to keep lifting them up, pushing them up, pushing them up, pushing them up, and seeing God leave you there with a gap here between one and twenty. Push them, put them on their shoulders, hoist them up, and you wait there for your reward. That's the minister of a person who wants to be like his master. If you're going to pray, then you must realize that prayer is not about personal gain. Prayer is not a tender that God gives to you. 
We don't have to tender pray. We'll, 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 we'll split the, the, the rewards. No. He pushed us now into the heights that he never even went to. He screamed his head off. We are using microphones. He walked with drive to the invitations. He was despised. Some of the pastors have got bodyguards. He sat on the, on the seashore. They sit on thrones in their churches. That's how people misunderstand Jesus. Intercessors must know him better. You need to know if you're going to take up on the ministry of your intercessor, you're going to have to walk in your master's footsteps. Can you give us verse number six? We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way and the Lord has laid it on him. The Lord has laid, on, laid on him the iniquity of all of us. We are like sheep just going astray. Everyone turning his own way and God held him responsible for that. He took all the iniquities, all the wrongs, all the going astray. Everything, our stubbornness, he put it on him. So intercessors realize the, the, the position. Our position is to stand and labor between man and God. We are like motor mechanics. When a client comes and collects the car, we stand there with an overall FA. With a cloth hanging out of the pocket, then we tell. After opening up the door, we, 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 we remove our fingerprint, yet we fix the car. And the client can come back and say, you fixed my car, but you left some grease on the steering wheel. You can't say to them, I appreciate it. That's the means of intercession. That you, you, you clean them up, you become filthy for them. At the end of it all, you make sure they look the part. Then you stand aside. Then they are applauded by the rest. And some of them would come and kiss you in your face. You give up, you can give up if you want to. But if you know the life of Jesus, you'll never give up. The life of Jesus on earth perfectly displayed how anybody who wishes to please God should be prepared to be totally alienated from those around them. The intercessor's goal should be to want to bring reconciliation between God and men, but to take sides with God. Do you know why it takes sides with God? Because God is the rewarder. God is the manager of life. God is the, the author of intercession. Because he's the one who said, in Isaiah 59, men are doing everything. Justice is standing there. Truth is just not being told anywhere. I'm worried. Is there any man who can stand between me and these people? And that is why I said to you, we do not have any record. Not because it was neglected, but because there was no such. Nobody ever in the society, in the community, helped know what to build the ark. This is what I believe, Khatisum. But I had one man, one neighbor in GR. Hey, Marnoa. No, you can't labor by yourself, bro. Let me help you. That man would have been saved. Noah didn't do what Moses did. You know, when God said to Moses, go to Egypt, Moses said, I can't talk, but he's talking. <laughs> go to Moses was saying, I can't talk the talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I know I'm going to dude. <laughs> what are you talking? Huh? No, I'm gonna, But he knew. Moses and Nara can't talk, he knew. He had killed the dude. The, he was wanted by the, by the uh, Egypt CID department. They wanted him. The hawks are going to Egypt for killing the man. 
So he should have just said, God, you know, last time I went there, I killed somebody. You know that. I'm a Ura can talk. <laughs> and God says, no problem. We're not just go there. So somebody will come and talk for you. <laughs> then as soon as he gets there and he says, he begins to see how, how, how God is supporting. Then he talks. Yeah, he talks. Come on, say he talks. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? How people will resist in jail to stand between God and other people. How people would see themselves inadequate. I don't blame him because Moses knew if I'm going to release sinners, I must be righteous. I'm as guilty as them. But God said, where well, I find a man? Isaiah chapter number one, one of my favorite scriptures, Isaiah stood before the Lord in a, in a, in a vision. The first thing he recognized, I'm a man of unclean lips. Because I live among people with unclean lips. You, you, you have taken the wrong man you know, into your presence. I'm just like them. God says, no problem. Took it on a coal, touched his lips, and said, now I have cleansed you. Just like Moses, go to Egypt. As soon as you step on the border, I will cleanse you. So God chose you out of that family of alcoholics and everything else. Because he trusts you. He wants to use you to be an intercessor. He wants to use you to break the family, the, the, the generations, f f the generational curses and the altars in the family that has been there for years that your fathers could not break. Because he can trust you. And he says he doesn't come with, a, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, some appreciation. They will never applaud you for that. They'll want to crucify you. As a matter of fact, they may even take you. Some of you, I'm, I'm sure there's somebody in this place who can bank up. I believe I laugh like a Where you went and the Bible ended up missing. But I said, 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 I You know that very well. You know that very well. Makarat, but you know that the damn well. Hmm? So the intercessor's goal should be to want to bring reconciliation between God and man. But it is done by taking sides with God. No wonder everything Jesus did or desired or said was what was pleasing to the Father. His joy was the Father's joy. His will was the Father's will. His desires were the Father's desires. Even his death was the perfect will of God. He was just willing. I have come to do your will, O oh God. That's all he said in the book of, uh, is it Hebrews? With sacrifices and everything else, you were not pleased. Therefore, a body you prepared for me. I'm willing to go down there and become the sacrifice. Let's read John 15. In other, in today's language, we could simply say Jesus did not have a life. Hmm. You know, when you talk to people and about, but conclude, I want to have a life. When, but what do you do? What do you do during the week? I go to work, and then I go home, and then. Tuesday, I go to work and go home. Wednesday, I go to work and go home. Then uh, Thursday, yeah, Thursday, Friday, I go here. Saturday, no, we have intercession at church. Dude, do you have a life? They start getting worried. Dude. How? Then they go like Sunday, no, Sunday our preacher preaches for two hours. But ah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, sorry about ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. One man talking to you for two hours. But dude, you don't have a life. So Jesus never had a life. Check his profile. He never had a life. John 5, 18. And this is exactly what intercession does. It consumes. Say consume. It consumes you. God's business becomes your business. God's goal becomes your goals. I promise you, try it. Do the will of God. Be immersed in God's will. And you see the rewards in this world. 
Jesus said more one you will have everything with persecutions. Could you never just be applauded by the world? You serve God. You become a step ladder where on, on, whose, on, on, on your shoulders they climb to get to the top. They get to the top, look back and mock you. But I didn't get here because of your prayers. If you could pray up to this height, you should be here. Climb, climb on top of the roof. Use a step ladder. Then get onto the roof and say to the step ladder, since you could hoist me, come up and see if it will come. People are idiots. Basabon. They say that. They say, no, no, no. no don't claim that you made me. Don't, don't claim that I, I got a job because of your prayers. Don't. They tell you that. But you are unemployed yourself. How could God use it to give me a job if, he, if you were not you needed a job? That's, that's people. That's exactly why intercessors should stand on the word of the Lord. It's not about personal gain. It's about heavenly gain. And if I leave this world and I have never seen anything of the goodness of the Lord this side, rest assured, there's going to be a party on the other side. I promise you. But Jesus has given us a consolation. We'll conclude with it. And that's why some of you have, uh, have become bitter. Um, you became, especially, you know, the, 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 the challenge of being the firstborn in the family. Firstborns are more like intercessors. Because your father just, uh, you know, parents can choose. We want six kids, and they don't even know what they want to give them next. That's the problem of being a parent. Yeah, I want four boys and two girls. Go. No, we've got, we've got two. two children, uh, girls or boys. Let's try for a, for a boy. And another boy comes. Let's try for a boy. And another boy comes. Let's try for a girl. And then, and then, and then, and then, then finally, they don't actually realize or this, when I was first born, all oh, these five were born for you. The four. I promise you. The more your parents keep trying, they're trying for you. Then after the perfect born, seventh born, the father decides to die. Dude, are you serious? Are you, are you, are you serious? You're dying. Seven children. No, maybe he's first born. Six children. And then the uncle, the, the uncle, the younger brother to your father comes him. Samshana. You the father now. No! You the father, take care of your siblings. But uncle, even if I had a wife, I would only have one child. So in a, in a way, firstborns know the ministry of intercession. They inherit the mess they never created. And then the mess doesn't appreciate them no matter how much they work. Those of you who, moms know this very well, with babies who are actually suckling, you know they can actually even bite the teeth. <laughs> These little monsters can actually hurt you sometimes. Eh? <laughs> Why now are they biting it? That's children's way of saying thank you. Yeah. They say, mom, this is so delicious, I wish it was steak or something like that. <laughs> Let's go on. But firstborns occupy the role of an intercessor because they clean up, they stand. They stand between the father's business and the business itself. Then they try to build this ch these children who are un unappreciative. Then they spend all their livelihood bringing their siblings up. Then they cannot even study to, uh, to improve their education. They will keep working at a company as a laborer in school, every one of them, 
until three of them becomes doctors, others becomes this and that and that. And those very same ones, they come and they mock him and they say, you can't tell me anything, you don't even have education. Not realizing already, all the degrees that they have in the family, in essence, they belong to the intercessor. Hallelujah. And that is why I, I, I you know some of, well, some, some of those cutest pictures ever would be for somebody to going for a graduation. Then there's a, this old lady who would come all the way from Limpopo. She understands nothing. She has nothing. She cannot even hear one word. She doesn't know what's happening here. There's people on the school, on, on, on the podium. There's everything else. Names have been called. And finally, the daughter is called. She goes up there. She's put, she's put on a gown and everything else. She receives a sash and everything else. And she takes it and she goes out with mom. And she takes it and puts it on the head of the mother. That's what God will do to intercessors. One day he will take all on Jesus. All the sins were taken and put as a crown on his head. But in heaven, a crown, a real one, was put on his head. And a, a, a crown awaits every intercessor, even as a firstborn or anyone who has ever done good in the name of the Lord, stood in the gap to see to it that everybody becomes what they will never even dream of. Imagine when Jesus sees people driving cars and everything else, and he's looking, not Christ, Jesus. The difference is, you know, there was Christ, the son of the living God, and Jesus, the son of man. Christ had to come into the body and live. Jesus was the man. See that? That's why Jesus could die but Christ can never die. He's God. Imagine Jesus when he sees people driving out. Yo. If I was Jesus, I would say, Father, okay, can I go just two months on earth? Just for two months. Get a Porsche or something like that. But no, he never. That was not his portion. He lived so that we may actually have all this. He died so that we should actually have all this. He just said everything else, everything else. So an intercessor may not have their earthly rewards. That's the challenge. But Jesus gave a consolation in the book of Luke. There are no one has ever left anything for this world. But he says you have it with persecutions. Hmm? From the same people. You never had a, a, a comfortable bed to sleep on, providing for everyone else. They grow up and they buy beds. They will never even give you their old bed. Continue to sleep on the floor. Buy again. Thank God that there's, there's a place called heaven. And where we will hear him say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come, sit in my presence. He'll wipe away every tear. We said John, 5, John 5, 18. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him after healing a man. Okay, dudes, let's be honest. Fine. Let's be, just look at me for a moment. You know, you, you never understand how people imagine. If there is a, a man who is at a street corner, now we live here, and there's a man at a street corner there, and he is begging, and everybody's just walking past the man. Fine? And then you come, and then you take off your own jacket. You put it on a man, take off it. You just dress him up. Then you take money, you give it to him. Then somebody comes and says, why are you making this, this guy nice? What are you going to say? Uh, well, no, it's, it's, it's the hardest thing ever. Eh? 
For somebody who say, why, why, why are you dressing him? Why are you giving this man your jacket? Why are you giving him your money? What are you going to say to the guy? Exactly. Precisely. Because this man has been sitting here. He is okay according to you. That's exactly the argument here. He heals the man, but why are you healing the man? Is he okay when he's sick? No. But you can't heal him today. Because it's the Sabbath. Okay. Monday to Friday. Did you know, heal the man? <laughs> no. <laughs> but now you must dictate when I must heal him. Yes. Because you now we care about the Sabbath more than the man. You see? We care about when you do it. You can't do it today because today is the Sabbath. If you want to heal him, please come back tomorrow. You're praying in the family, you're praying too loud. You're taking, you, your sister's left with their children. She's not coming back. She's gone to whoever knows where. Since she went to work on Thursday, it's Sunday. She never came back. She's still on her way from work. You came to church. You took her kids. You left them at the Sunday school. She comes this afternoon and says, no, you must never take my children to church. <clears throat> That's intercession for you. And you go like, I'm confused. No. I'm, 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 I don't, you don't be, con, don't be confused. I don't, don't be confused. It's easy. These children are mine. You're not going to take them to be lied to by your pastor. If you go to church, leave my children. No, it doesn't matter. Just leave my children. But you come back, she comes back, and the kids say, Yo, ma. Yo, is it Duma? Is it Duma? Is it Duma? We went with Auntie to some bash. She says, Ah, Auntie likes you. Ne? Thanks for looking after my children. Intercession. Intercession. That's a typical story, such on chapter number five. Read the preceding verses. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father. Okay, fine. Do you want me to tell you a secret? Must I tell you a secret? Zuma is my father. <laughs> Does that have to bother you anyway? So if Jesus says, God is my father, what's... If you think he's, cook, he's, he's going to cook, he's going to cook. So what's the problem? I can't remember you just laughed at him. Why, why couldn't they just be like you? But oh, he's saying God is his father. Ah, leave, the, leave the guy in the stress. No, they're concerned. They're concerned that he's saying God is his father. Now, people you pray for are so fussy about things that don't want them. I promise you. I said to you, if God has put you in a position in your family to become the light of the world and the salt of the earth, therefore be prepared to be tripped over as many times as possible by the same people you're trying to share the light with and preserve. It's not them. These are kingdom issues. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds, demolishing arguments and every pretension and everything, 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 everything. To get the point, we are fighting against kingdoms here. You're trying to take some people out of darkness. People, so much happens after, after dark. There are, there's a word, nocturnal, nocturnal, nocturnal. Uh, well, nobody masters pronunciation. Nocturnal, nocturnal. 
no kutulan. <laughs> Nobody masters pronunciation. So the word is called nokutulan, which means operating both day and night. But hunale some animals which are strictly nocturnal, strictly uh, uh, creatures of darkness, which never show up during the day. And they enjoy it. Most or not, darkness is as good as light to creatures that are operating during the day. So, if God had to check people, that's what I've just said, he would have to create two Jesuses. The Jesus for the bad and the Jesus for the good. People who are going to compliment him and those who are going to complete. Jesus will be complimented and Jesus will be opposed. Then the Jesus will be here and the Jesus will see what you want. Nobody wants me. I'm a people who are okay with me. He had to bring the same Jesus once. So you're occupying a position a man who was rejected for doing good, who was despised, who was actually knocked on the cross, who was, the more he spoke, the more he annoyed them. And he never said anything annoying. If Jesus stands and says, God is my father, so what? Let's be honest, so what? No, you can't say that. You can't say God is your father. Okay? That's what they said. You can't say that. For this reason, the Jews tried all the harder to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father. Making himself equal to God. Can I ask you a question? Yes. When Jesus was baptized in the river Jordan by John the Baptist, remember what happened? The Holy Spirit in the form of dove came and hovered upon him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. So any religious leader should have known about the incident. It wasn't like Jesus was baptized in Cape Town and the guys were come down. Right? No. Space is not a thing. There were very few people. Everything, everything that happened there trended. They knew. Or this was the man who was just uh, baptized and heaven opened. No, they tried to ignore that because it is in the nature of uh, the unregenerate people to separate, to separate truth, to separate it and, and, and distort it, to make you to become discouraged for standing for God. Go to work, share nude pics and everything else. Nobody's going to care. Start sharing the verses on the network. They're going to call you to order. Send pornography. Nobody's going to worry about it. You see, you see, you see pornography, news, and everything else. Ah, no, no, no. But that fellow, Matuata Pelas, has seven. Marche verses. You're going to be called on the intercom. I promise you. But. Amen. Pillar people are beginning to complain that you are sending them scriptures. So please, we know you are going to church. We know you are a Christian, but no, no. Please respect space, he's saying. Because nobody wants an intercessor. So if you are looking for people to appreciate you, wait until you get to the other side. That side you'll be appreciated. Let me give you just uh, two more scriptures, then we, then we go home. More John 14, verse number 8. John 14, 8. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father... And that will be enough for us. 
Jesus answered. Now, the statements of Philip show us the Father. He was not being an unbeliever. But Philip was one of the disciples. We, we, we had how many disciples who, stu, who, stu, who stuck out in the team of Jesus? We had uh, the two sons of Zebedee, James and John. We had Peter. They made, this was the trio that Jesus would call when things were tough. If there was a resurrection to be done, out of the 12, he would call the two sons of Zebedee, James and John and Peter, and say to the other, Because he knew this was a, the resurrection team. Anything he said, they would do. Then there was Peter who stood out as the group's spokesperson. Jesus said to them, for a rich man to enter heaven, it would be like a camel going through the eye of a needle. Peter said, but Lord, you can't say that. We've lost, we've lost everything. Jesus, you can't say that. We came here. You found us fishing. You made us live fishing. So you're telling us these stories. Fine. Spokesperson. There was the confidant, John, the beloved disciple. When he said, one of you is going to betray me. I think Peter knew. God, Peter was the whole man of team. He knew he was a bad guy around here. But then they say to Jesus, to, to John, when I ask him, who, who is that one? Remember that? Then Jesus said, no problem. Uh, he took bread, dipped it, and he said, to whom I will give this is the one. He gave it to Judas. So Judas went out. Jesus hung on the cross. He wants to leave his mother with someone to look after him. He looks at John and says to John, dude, look after my mother. These are all intercessors. You get the point. Then there is a guy called Thomas. Who's been lying low all along. He never said anything until Jesus rose from the dead. And he says, now we'll never believe. I think Thomas would have said, paraphrased, I never believed this dude from day one. <laughs> he was quiet all along. That's an intercession. They had the negative side. When somebody wants to steal the faith of those who walked with Jesus at a crucial hour. Had Jesus never came at that point to present himself to the disciples, the kingdoms of darkness would have won the faith of the disciples through the statement of Thomas. He said, no, I will never believe it. I have never believed it. I'm not a child. If he comes, I'm going to ask him. I want to put fingers in those holes to make sure. Because I saw him knocked on the cross. So if Jesus never came, there would have been negative intercession from the dark world into the hearts of the disciples. And they would have just dismissed and went back fishing. So he makes a point. Of, hey, I'm busy, but I must go there. I must go there. I must go there. But I need to go there as soon as possible. Then Jesus started thinking about shying him too long. I'm not even going to go through the door, through the wall. Then what? Yeah. Then he speaks in Africans' language. Are how's that? Ushaba Thomas. Are Thomas how's that? I heard you want to put your fingers in here, dude. Come do it. In front of the ones Thomas tried to steal their faith as an intercessor. Thomas could hear from the devil at that particular moment. So Jesus made sure he seals every leakage. He seals it completely. And then he goes out and he says to them, you're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses both in Jerusalem Judea, Samaria, even unto the uttermost parts of the earth, that's where Shawolo comes in and so where to. In Matthew 28, go into the world therefore and preach the gospel to every living creature, teaching them to obey everything I have taught you. And they never did anything. Fine. They stayed there. Until there was something called persecution. They persecution. When in intercessor, when they were given the means of intercession to go out and share the gospel and multiply the kingdom, there was some form of intercession. 
to go sell God to the nations, intercession. So every person who goes on missions, every person who goes on talking street to street, handing out uh, pamphlets and everything, it's, it's a form of intercession. The preaching of the gospel is intercession. Allowing God to speak to the others through you is intercession. So they go out only after Stephen was killed, but then they, go, they went out anyway. And then there's revival all over the world. And we are the direct results of that intercession. And we're sitting here today, and we doubt everything the Bible says. This one says I'm Zulu, that one says I'm Sutu, this one, everybody wants to just push their father's traditions. The same fathers Jesus came to. The same sins he died for. And that's why Paul began saying, as ambassadors for Christ, we plead you on God's behalf. Be reconciled with God. Paul understood it, Ari. As I started earlier, Ari, we are ambassadors in this world. Our kingdom is not of this world. Though we live in this world, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. We don't fight according to the weapons of the, earth, of the world. We use different methods. Or we'll cast down even, even every imagination and we'll also be ready to punish every act of disobedience. But that's how authoritative the church has become. Now, what weakens the church in our generation? Church has gone so contemporary. Christianity has just become something you subscribe to. Guru, when somebody says I'm Christian, they're simply saying in other terms, but, but I'm not Muslim or Jewish or Hindu. I'm, I am a Christian, but I think Christianity makes sense. And that is why in our country, over 80%, over 80% of people profess Christianity. One day I said something very simple. I was almost skinned alive by pastors, skinned alive. I said to these pastors, we 80% of the country, people who say, who believe in God, who look at the sun and say, that was created by God. Not necessarily people who actually like, like seriously, into, people who are religious. You know, who, 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 who say, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. What's happening in the name of Jesus? People who pray for food, 80%. And I said to them, God, look, pastors, it's easy, this thing. It's easy. We are 80%. And being 80%, we can run this country. God, we go to the ZCC. We tell Khanyan, Real Khanyan, tell your people to vote for this particular Christian party. All premiers will come, call Khanyan, Balimpo, Polimpo, Malang, everywhere. We go to Shembe, say the same thing. We go to Murisa, say the same thing. Everyone. God, in no time, we'll run the country and we can bring back, back prayer and everything else. God, we're not meeting for fellowship. We're meeting around a political agenda. Bare una na ore rona, re batle pona, re buswa ke le khanyana. Karat was an easy thing. We go to Mudise and say Mudise, let people vote for this party. Wherever there's church and Mudise call it premiers, everything else offices and everything. Then we will Kare None of us pastors gets involved in the offices. People in our churches will run them. We'll have everything. We'll have order. We'll have less corruption. But suddenly they will never eat more than 10%. Couldn't Zorani commit corruption? They won't take more than 10%. I promise you. We only know 10%. Then we can include 10% in the budget. They are corruption. There are 10% extra. And that's all. It's pastors who said, no, no, we're not interested. 
God, but then if somebody from Shembe becomes a member of a party and he rules you, you'll be under his care. That was a form of intercession. It could have worked. And I'm not saying that anymore. I'm just giving examples. The intercession. Your intercession is not only about praying, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. If it was in your power to bring the kingdom, if it was in your power to enforce the laws of God, what would you do? Sunday could be a holiday like it used to be. Everybody could come to church. Nobody would get a job and work on a Sunday. Because shops would open up one, restaurants only one. Nobody delivering bed like a Santa. It was a Monday. Let me read with you Matthew 26, 37 to 39. It says, and taking with him, Matthew 26. Then he took, no, 26, 37, 37 to 39, 37. Thank you. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul, if, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, May this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. What am I saying? Jesus as man came to a point where he felt he could quit. But he was committed to doing the Father's will. So intercessors are not going to have a good time all the time. As a matter of fact, we may have better times not better, better times than gooder times. <laughs> you get the point? But what do we do? We submit it to the will of God. Keep doing the will of the Father. It's going to happen one day that we are no longer in this world. When we reach the other side, it's going to be I believe the most exciting time ever. And we will one day realize that everything we thought we missed in this world only had earthly value, not eternal value. So earthly value is what the world thinks you need to have. They said God has committed himself for that already, to that. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. He said, no one has left father or mother or sister or brother, wife or husband or land or anything for my sake and for the sake of the kingdom will fail to get all those things back in this world. But with persecutions and they are in the world to come, they will get what is eternal life. So intercessors, your ministry goes beyond the grave. Keep praying. The Bible says men have to always pray and never give up. Let's stand up. Keep calling on the name of the Lord. Keep standing in the gap. Keep asking. Keep knocking.
God is not man that he should lie. Or the son of man that he needs to repent. Everything he says it, he will do. He means what he says. Don't have your one foot in this one issue, the other foot in them. Be fully given to the minister of the Lord. Make time to pray. Special time to pray. Special time where you're going to go into the Father's presence and, and fill your mouth with, with arguments and approach him and say, this is the matter I pray for this. Hit that spot until it cracks. Thank you. Can you give us the confession? So you'll go after me. My Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me the grace to walk in my Master's footsteps, to feel his sorrow, his pains, and the rejection by the same people he came to save. I appreciate and embrace my ministry as an intercessor. And I am fully, truly grateful that you gave me grace to occupy until Jesus returns. I receive the authority to step into my master's shoes and walk with the same passion and integrity as he did. I pray for your kingdom to come and not to tarry. And for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for answering all my prayers. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come on, let us stand the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank him. Father, we praise and thank you. We give you glory and honor and praise and adoration. Lord, we thank Come on, let us thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. We praise you. You are more than enough, Lord. You are El Shaddai, the God of mercy. You are the all-sufficient one, God Almighty. Praise be to you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We give it glory. Hallelujah.